flexible LED filaments. I thought I'd get some and strip one of them apart and take a look. It turns out they're quite hard to strip apart. I was hoping I was going to be able to peel some of the silicon off to reveal the circuit board. But as it happens, uh, any attempt to actually scrape it very gently with a knife ended up just cutting the circuit board. And then when I cut bits and uh, off, I put them in various solvents to hoping that I could dissolve the silicon and reveal the circuit board. No luck. But that's okay. Because what I actually did in the end was I illuminated it at a controlled intensity and I stuck a magnifying gla glass over it and doodled it down and then created a graphical representation, which I will come to in a moment. It's a very interesting construction. So the reason I got these is because another YouTuber uh, who makes models uh, had made a model of a neon sign. And they'd used this, so it's a scale model, but it had this very sharp outline of this stuff. And the stuff operates at 3 volts per section, so I've basically got four sections here, and at the moment it's at 12 volts, and it's passing 200 milliamps. The 200 milliamps equates to just one milliamp per LED in here, because there are 200 LEDs in each section of this. I worked it out that in the 285 millimetres that is lit up, that's about 11 inch, uh, there are 200 LEDs, so roughly 7 per 10 millimetre. The circuit board inside appears to be 1.5 millimetre wide, and then it's coated in the phosphor. Now, it's worth mentioning, the seller I got these from on AliExpress is selling what appear to be slight rejects, and it's not an issue for people like us that are just experimenting with them. But if you look along it, and you're not really going to see it, because uh, it, you certainly wouldn't see it in the distance, but I can see right now there are occasionally dark bits along it, and it's not because the LEDs are out. It looks as though the LEDs have flipped up sideways and are actually projecting light out the side instead. And that's viable for the way they're soldered on. So let me uh, bring in a doodle and show you the construction of this. I shall also zoom down slightly. Zoom in down. So the circuit board is a very thin, flexible circuit board, very delicate. And... It has a pad on each end and then a series of uh, pairs of pads with what are, appear to be flip chips. Flip chips are LEDs that basically have little solder pads on them, the bare chip itself. So it's almost like a surface mount LED, but there is no package. It is just the bare LED. It's the way a lot of stuff has gone. And what it means is that they can apply probably a continuous process. They can apply uh, solder paste onto these little pads. They can use a machine that, I'm goodness knows how it does it because they're tiny, that picks and places the LEDs on and then it will take them into a reflow oven, it will heat the solder up and it will flow on and solder them. Uh, that's where I think some of these little LEDs are sitting across like that. And I think as the solders, they're flipping up on their end like that uh, because the light distinctly shines out the side for some of them. And the arrangement they've got, you've got the positive end and the negative end. They have the large pad, thermal isolation going over to the first LED, and then they've got a bus going up one side that connects to the positive of all the LEDs, and then the other side is a bus that goes down all the negatives. And that means that theoretically, this LED here uh, has the same sort of circuit resistance as the LED in the middle because the tracks are the same length. But in reality, and I'm not sure why this is, the green is visibly brighter at one end, uh, at both ends actually, but duller in the middle, as is the blue. I'm not sure why the current isn't shearing equally. I wonder if that's part of the degradation in the middle with the flowing process. I'm not really sure. But uh, this arrangement means that these LEDs are, these whole filaments just operate at three volts because all the LEDs are effectively in parallel. Let me bring in a notepad and doodle. Oh, there's another pen. I shall use that one. So the construction is this. They have the circuit board with the little tiny chips mounted on it, and then they coat it with a phosphor-loaded gel. And the other side is coated with slightly less phosphor-coated gel. It's more translucent the other side. And any light that gets bounced off the top also goes through the circuit board and comes through the bottom. To terminate onto it, the strip at the end has a crimp put on it, a little crimp that just basically goes under it like this and folds around and bites into that copper pad at the end. 
and that's the connection. Then they seem to screw it in place with a little blob of silicone and then put that sort of uh, the phospholoded silicon on it. It's very neat. The crimp itself, when it comes off the end, ha has a little tag that comes off like that. The positive one has a hole through it. Just in case you get some of these, there's a one of the tags has no hole, it's a negative. One of the tags has a hole, it's positive. Just for reference, that's how to identify them. The colours, uh, you've got the sort of warm white, a sort of goldeny white. You've got the green, the blue and a sort of pink. This is red, but red doesn't work that well. It's nowhere near as bright as the other colours. Uh, but that's because the red doesn't really want too much blue. Uh, and blue is the main stimulating uh, LED that stimulates the phosphor. So they have to use quite a thick layer of phosphor to get the red, but actually hide the blue from sight. Otherwise, you'd end up with a sort of pinky colour. So this one is a fairly dark red. I should show you it, shouldn't I? I should. One moment, please. And back again. Uh, here is the red. And again, it's got a real hot spot at the end, but dim in the middle. I'm not sure why that is, but you can also see... The irregularity of the LEDs in this stuff, it's really pretty visible. I shall zoom down a bit so you can marvel at the irregularity. Hey, it was cheap. I knew what I was getting. Uh, I'm just glad that all the LEDs are lit. But it's notable that the ones uh, that where there's a gap, it's you twist it slightly, and uh, it seems like they're just pointing light out the side. Very strange, you're not sure why that is. If they've just flipped up or it's something else. Uh, the red, though, not as bright as the others. It's worth mentioning that uh, you run these at three volts and uh, I would say one milliamp per LED is ample. I'm not sure what they're rated, but certainly that would equate to three volts, 300 milliamp, uh, 200 milliamp, that would be 0 0.6 watts. I suppose you could run them higher. They're not really going to be too pushed. I'm not sure they're rated, but I think they're more designed as a visual effect. You'll often find these in the lights spiraled round with big, long, gangly filaments and little supports. Um, quite nice that they're low voltage though. It opens up possibilities of using them in sort of like costume uh, effects. And they're very resilient. I did manage to damage one though. I put it in a connector and then I really absolutely flailed it off the table to see if I could break it. Um, what I did manage to do is break one of the solder connections and also fracture the circuit board with the flexing where it went onto one of the connectors. So if you reckon there's going to be a lot of movement, put a bit of heat shrink sleeving over the end just to actually reinforce it. I've actually put heat shrink sleeving where I've soldered these end to end. And because I've got four of them, uh, the four times three, it runs at 12 volts. But uh, I would go by limiting the current. I'd uh, adjust it to whatever uh, limits the current to a safe level for these. So I shall provide a link to where I got these, but be aware that they are kind of reject, factory rejects. They're just for playing with. And also be aware that sometimes when I provide links to AliExpress sellers, the price goes through the roof. It sometimes happens. It happened with this. I made a video about this little uh, portable soldier iron. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Right, that's it. Uh, and the seller just hiked the price up uh, more than double. So I removed the link and I told them why I'd removed the link. Um, they just sent a wee question mark back to me. No, I don't know if they understood what I was saying. I was saying, stop being dicks. However, it's also worth mentioning that there are other tempting things available from this seller, like colourful uh, solid LED filaments. These are the higher voltage ones. But uh, these ones arrived intact, and these ones all arrived broken. And they they were shipped in tiny little bags, just in amongst other stuff. And you're thinking, oh, maybe they broke in the shipping. But I've had experience with buying the filaments from China. I get the feeling that they quite often just throw the broken ones into the packaging as well. So I'm not sure if they were broken in shipping or if they were broken before shipping. However, they weren't packaged correctly. Just be aware of that if you consider buying the, the solid filaments. But that is it. So what you see is kind of think of for this. Well, it's just a visually nice thing. You could make yourself a necklace out of it, I suppose with a little uh, battery pack, because it doesn't take much current. Even at just 10 milliamps, it glows quite brightly. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, but really, it's just uh, whatever you want to do with it, fundamentally. It produces a nice 
sharp line of light. But that is it. That's how they make it, uh, the construction inside. I'll check back later and see if the stuff that I put in the solvent has dissolved in any way. Sometimes the silicons kind of puff up when you put them in acetone and things like that. But uh, so far, no luck. But if that I, I do have luck, I'll maybe make a note down below in the description or whatever. But anyway, that's it. The gangly, very flexible LED filaments. 